Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. But the text leading up to this verse is a set, an example how Paul spread the gospel in rather dying circumstances. He comes towards the end of his life and he says, reading verse 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. May God bless the reading of this verse. Thank you, Ed. Good morning and a happy Sabbath. If you have your bulletins, there's a sheet there's a sheet there of other scriptures in there that you will need and open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So you will need both of those. And for those who are interested, we're having prayer ministries after, after church this afternoon and we brought plenty of food. So if anybody wants to stay, please, you're welcome. The more people praying, the better. The more people lifting their voices up and petitioning the Lord God, the better. Also, let me give an update on the radio program. They say that for every contact that you have, you have about a thousand people listening. And so far this year, I forgot to count. So we've had seven or eight contacts. I should have counted. So we've got about 7,000, 8,000 people who've been listening to the program so far this year. So keep us in prayer. And the times are in the bulletin if you want to listen in. And if you want to donate, just make a check out to the church and just designate it the radio program. And uh, it'll get to where it needs to go. Let's have a word of prayer. <coughs> Father, again, we're thankful for your Sabbath day. We're thankful, Lord, for the way that you lead us and help us. We pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Please teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. And the Apostle Paul here is writing. And in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, he says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Now the Apostle Paul is referring to the Corinthian games. And it's kind of like the Olympics, only they didn't have nearly so many events. They had racing, which is what he's talking about. They might have had boxing and wrestling and discus throwing. They had a few games. And he's illustrating this as an illustration of the Christian life. He reminds us that those runners get out there, and there's several of them. There's quite a few, but only one's going to win. So he says, live the Christian life with the intention of winning. Live the Christian life with the intention of going to heaven. Why should we live the life with the intention of being third? Why should we live the Christian life with the intention of being fifth or being last? Live the Christian life, run the race with the intention of winning the prize, heaven, eternal life. Now today, there's a lot of these sports stars, and some of them are out to win the championship. You can tell by the way they play, they are there to win. But others, they're just all about money. They're just all about, look at me. You can tell by the way that they're playing, they're not there to win. And Paul says, we are here to win. We're here for eternal life. We're here to live forever. Live like it. Act like you want heaven. Live like you want eternal life. In Philippians 3.12, the Bible says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that if I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, what Paul is saying is God wants us to win. God wants us to win the prize. God wants us to run with the intention of being first place, of winning heaven of having eternal life, of living forever. That's God's will for you. That's God's plan. Everybody here today, God wants you in heaven. And he wants us to live like we intend to go to heaven. 
Now, if a person, if they're on a team and they're not really there to win, now they just want to look good, they just want to make some money, you can tell by the way that they're playing. And so a church member, if they're here just to look good, just look at me, they're not asking the question, what is God's will? Who does God want to be the singer? I want to be the singer. They're not asking, who does God want to be the elder? They're saying, I want to be the elder. They're not asking, who does God want to be the deacon? They want to be the deacon. They're not about God. They're all about self. And you can tell by the way they live. You can tell by the way that they run. Now, most of these races, they were an individual event. But they had some team races where the whole team would come together. They'd run a relay race. They'd run part of the leg, each one of them. And in the Christian life, in one sense, it's an individual event. I choose whether I'm going to be saved. You choose whether you're going to be saved. But it's also a team event. It is more than just me. It is us. It's more than just one person. It is us. We are the team. God has assembled us as a team. We are to work together. We are to pull together. If you see a team and they're trying to win this, the championship, but they're fighting, they're arguing, they're bickering, they're not going to win, and the devil knows that. So he's doing everything he can to get our team arguing, bickering, fighting amongst each other. He's there working on our nerves. He's there whispering in our ears. Did you hear what they said about you? Did they see what they did to you? Are you really going to stand for that? If you're having troubles with somebody in the church, you know the devil's working. You know somewhere, somehow, he's working. He's trying to separate brethren. He's trying to keep us from working together. Because he knows if we are working together, we can win. We can win the prize. We can win eternal life. Most of these teams, they're only allowed so many players. You can have five players. You can have 20 players whatever, but it's not that way in the Christian life. We look around us and we can have as many team players as we can pull in. God is not satisfied with just filling this church. God is not saying just fill the church and then you can stop. But God wants to pack this church. And then God wants to pack it again and pack it again. He wants to win as many souls as possible. And he's given us gifts. He's given us talents so we can use them for God's glory. In Romans 12, verse 6 to 8, Paul says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophesy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorts or encourages on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So God has given us these different gifts, these talents, these abilities, because he wants to see souls won. He wants to see this church packed. He wants to see people in heaven. And he calls on us to use our gifts, use our talents, according to his ability. Paul says in this verse, run that you may obtain. Live the Christian life as if you intend to be saved. Live the Christian life, run the Christian race with the intention of going to heaven. Luke 13, 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, says Jesus, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. In other words, give it your best to enter heaven. Give it your all to enter heaven. Don't live half-heartedly. Don't compromise. Don't give up the faith. Run the Christian race with the intention of going to heaven. Strive to enter heaven. Strive to enter eternal life. Strive to make it. Because a lot of people are going to want to make it, and they're not going to make it. 
A lot of people are going to say, I'm running the race, and they're going to stop halfway. A lot of people are going to say, I've made the finish line, and they haven't made the finish line. God says, don't waste your time. Why waste your time living half-hearted? Why waste your time going through the motions? Give God your best. Give God your all. Strive to enter into heaven. Strive to have eternal life. 1 Peter 1.16 Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God calls, God calls on us to live holy lives. Strive to live holy lives. 2 Timothy 2.5 And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. In other words, if somebody wants to win the race, there are rules they have to follow. And if you don't follow the rules, you're not going to win. Quite a few years ago in the Olympics, uh, probably in the early 20s, the early 30s, there was this runner in America, and he was just unbelievably popular. Everybody loved him, and he was like a marathon runner. And he was the favorite to win. Now, I don't know how it is now, but back in those days, you'd go run, what is it, like the 26 miles, and the last quarter mile, you'd come into the stadium, and you'd like one loop around, and then you finished. Well, he came in, and he was way ahead of the pack, and everybody's going crazy, and everybody's just cheering him on. In fact, the people came out of the stands and got really close to him, cheering him on. Well, he got kind of dizzy, and he began to stumble, and some of the fans reached out and grabbed hold of him. They kind of steadied him on and set him on his way. And he went running around. And everybody's cheering. And he's getting close to the finish line. Everybody's going crazy. Finished number one. He finished first. He lost. He lost the race. He was disqualified because you can't touch a runner. He wasn't striving lawfully. And so there are ways for a Christian to live and ways for him not to live. Now, I understand we're not saved by our, our obedience, but we're certainly not saved by our disobedience. We may not make it into heaven because we're so obedient, but we may be excluded because we're not running the way God calls us to run. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10, Paul says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? <laughs> then he says, Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. No matter what anybody tells you, don't be deceived. He says, Neither fornicators, people who are sleep, sleeping around, idolaters, people who are into something other than God, nor adulterers, People who are sleeping with married people or sleeping around outside of marriage. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Two terms for homosexuals. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, if you choose to live one of these lifestyles without repenting, you're not going to make it into heaven. He's saying people who live like this will not see the kingdom of God. But praise God, he doesn't stop there. He says, and such were some of you. Some of the people who were heading to heaven used to be adulterers. They used to be effeminate. They used to be into sin. But he says you are washed. You are sanctified. You're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. They repented of their sins. They stopped doing the things that God said stop doing. They said, we're going to live the way God calls us to live. They got on track. They began to run the, run the race. And they entered into heaven. They finished the race. And so I understand our obedience may not get us there, but God says, this is how you need to live. God calls on his people. There's ways we must live and things we must avoid. Strive to enter heaven. Strive to have eternal life. Don't live half-hearted. Strive to be a great man of God or a great woman of God. 
Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now you might have seen some of these runners and they're running the race and they go just running as fast as they can. And they're just giving it their all. And they get so close to the finish line and the tape is right there and they begin to lean forward. They're putting everything into the race. Every muscle, every effort, every ounce of energy because they want to win. Paul says, press towards the mark. Give it your best in our heaven. Give it your all to have eternal life. Why should we live half-hearted and fall short of heaven? Why should we just go halfway with God when we could go all the way? It says, give it your best. Pray like you want to enter heaven. Read your Bible like you want to enter into heaven. Obey. Pray for help and strength like you want eternal life. Give it your best. Give it your all. James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman that says no to temptation. Doesn't say blessed is the man who gives in and says, well, I'll just ask for forgiveness. Blessed is the woman who just lives half-heartedly and gives in. But blessed are those who say no through the power of God, through the power of Jesus. They're asking for help. They're praying for help. When we strive to give it all, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. When we're giving it our best, we're going to make it. Hebrews 12.1 Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Paul talks about a race. And a runner, they're running the race. And he mentions two things. He says the sin which does so easily beset us. In other words, there are sins that we might be committing. And he says, let's stop. Through the power of Christ, let's pray for help, pray for strength, and lay these things aside. But then he talks about the weights. Now imagine a runner, and they're running the 100-yard dash, and they got weights in their hands. They're running with five, 10-pound weights in their hands. Well, they're not going to go very far. They're not going to win. So he says, put the weights down. Now in the Christian life, the weights are not sin. But the weights may be something that's perfectly acceptable, but if I give it too much time, it comes between me and Jesus. For example, my job may be a weight. They may, I may spend so much time on my job, I don't have time for God. I may spend so much time on my job that I don't have time for the church. I'm too tired to go to church. Our hobbies could become a weight. It may be totally acceptable, nothing wrong with this, but I spend so much time on it, I don't have time for God. So Paul says, let's put aside the weights, the things that are weighing us down, the things that keep us from living the Christian life the way we know that we should be living it. Ask for help. Ask for strength. Ask God for power. He'll help. In verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, now, a runner, where he's looking is where he's going to end up. If you see a runner, and he's supposed to be going this way, and he's looking to the right, well, he's going to kind of drift to the right. Or if he's looking to the left, he's going to kind of drift to the left. Where we're looking is where we're going to end up. And if we're constantly looking to Jesus, that's where we're going to end up. If we're constantly reading about him, constantly praying to him, Constantly talking about him, singing about him, wanting to make him happy. That's where we're going to end up. 
when we're looking unto Jesus for help to live the Christian life, constantly looking unto him for strength to live the way he calls us to live, those are the people who are ultimately going to end up in heaven. They're striving to be Christians. They're striving to have eternal life. They're giving it their best. They're giving it their all. That's how we should live. That's how we should run the Christian race. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 9.25. Back to the Bible. 1 Corinthians 9.25. Paul continues, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. In other words, what he's trying to say there is that some of those runners and some of our athletes today, they live certain lifestyle because they know it's better for their training. They know that if they do certain things, go to bed at certain times, eat certain ways, it's going to help them. They're going to be better athletes. And some of these people, they do it just so they can win the race. Maybe a little bit of of fame, maybe a little bit of fortune. That's what they do it for. And Paul says that should be our attitude, we as Christians. Now, I remember when I was younger, I used to play a lot of basketball. And I stopped eating chips because the oil used to kind of just set in my stomach and weigh me down. I couldn't play. I remember I stopped eating desserts because it was just kind of set in my stomach and I couldn't play very well. And so Paul's saying there may be things that we have to stop doing. If these guys are going to give so much and sacrifice so much just to win a race, shouldn't we be given so much for the eternal race? Shouldn't we be sacrificing so much for the eternal race? We've got heaven. Heaven to win. Eternal life to win. Paul says, give it your best to enter heaven. Give it your all to enter heaven. Why should we fall short? Why should we run halfway and stop? Those who strive to enter heaven are going to make it. Those who give God their best are going to make it. Those who give God their all, they will have eternal life. That's what God is looking for. That's what he's looking for. Now, those athletes and the athletes today, they work out and they build their muscles and they might spend hours, even a day in the gym, just working out. And so we as Christians, we need a spiritual workout. Daily, we need a spiritual workout. 2 Peter 3.18. Don't let me forget that. But grow in grace. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called on not to remain as we are, but to grow. Build our spiritual muscles. Build our spiritual strength. Read our Bibles daily. Talk to God in prayer daily. Work for Him. Help the church. Help others. It says, build your faith. Build your strength. We can be great Christians. We can be great Christians. We don't have to be half-hearted. We don't have to run halfway and stop. We can go all the way with God. We can go all the way with Jesus. That's what He wants. That's what He wants. 2 Timothy 4.8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul said that when he died, there was a crown waiting for him. A crown of righteousness. A crown of eternal life. He was like a runner running the race, and he finished He finished and he won. And that's what God wants for us. We're runners running the Christian race. God wants us to finish. God wants us to be so close to Jesus that we can say, I'm finishing. I'm finishing. Eternal life is within my grasp. Eternal life is right here. He says, give it your best. Give it your all. Don't live half-hearted. 1 Peter 1.4 to an inheritance incorruptible 
and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. There's a mansion with your name on it in heaven. To all those who really want it, to all those who are willing to give their all, give their best, there's a crown of eternal life. There's a mansion, there's a heavenly home for all who want it. 1 Peter 5, 4. I think he wants it. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. <laughs> when Jesus will appear, he's got crowns. He's got a crown for everybody. Anybody who wants it, he's got a crown with their name on it. He's got a mansion with their name on it for all who really, really want it. 1 Corinthians 9.26 I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. The runner needs to know the course. The last thing he needs is that the course is this way and he's way over off here somewhere. He's not going to finish. He's not going to win. As Christians, we need to know the course. We need to know what the Bible says. We need to know the truths of the scriptures. In Ephesians 4.14, Paul says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, by, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Satan has every false doctrine, every false teaching that you can imagine because he's trying to get us off the course. He's trying to lead people astray. Instead of focusing on Jesus, he's trying to get us to focus on something else. Instead of knowing the truth and knowing what is right, he wants us focusing on something else. Over the years, I've dealt with all kinds of issues that you wouldn't believe. Everyone the doctrine is blowing. People saying, well, men have to have beards. If you're really spiritual, you're going to have a beard. We've got people saying it's the lunar Sabbath. The Sabbath's based on the moon, not, not on Saturday. Satan has every false teaching out there. And some people are grabbing hold of him saying, this is true. This is new light. He's trying to lead us astray. He's trying to get us off the course. We've got to maintain the course. We've got to stay close to God. We've got to be close to him every step of the way. Now some say, well, that couldn't happen to me. I'm a seven-day Adventist. I know what the church teaches. Galatians 5, 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? These people were running well. They were running the race. They were heading towards the finish line. Satan got them off course. Satan was able to get them off track. And the devil, he's got so many tricks, so many deceptions up his sleeve. And if he has to bribe us with sin, he's going to try to bribe us with sin. If he has to heap upon us trouble and sorrow and heartache, he's going to do that. He's going to do whatever he thinks it takes to get us off the course. We've got to be faithful. We have to be committed. Every day we have to resolve, I'm going to run the race. Every day we have to resolve, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to live the way God calls me to live. Now that's the person who's going to end up in heaven. That's the person who when all is said and done, they're going to finish the race. They're going to reach out and grab the crown. They're going to have the prize. They're going to live forever. 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 7. Paul says, For I am now ready, <laughs> excuse me, ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith. That should be us. That can be us. There's no reason that can't be us. For those who really want it, those who really want the prize, really want eternal life, it's right there within our grasp. God will help us every step of the day. Wait. God will encourage us every step of the way. 
in Ecclesiastes 9.11. Solomon writing and he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. What Solomon is trying to say here in this verse is that sometimes in life, it's not the biggest who win. It's not the smartest who do the best. It's not the swiftest, the fastest who win the race, but sometimes it's just luck. Sometimes it's just dumb luck and that's who wins. Well, that may be true in this earthly life, but that's not true in the spiritual life. Nobody's just going to stumble along in the Christian life and wind up in heaven. Nobody's going to compromise, live half-heartedly, and think they're going to end up in heaven. But those who win are those who want to win. Those who finish the race are those who strive to finish the race. Those who end up in heaven are those who give it their best. They give it their all. They're living for God. They're loving Jesus more and more. That's who finishes the race. That's who wins. We can all be winners. We can all win. There's no reason not to win. The winners are those who strive. The winners are those who give God their best. The winners are those who go all the way with Jesus and they're faithful no matter what happens. In the races. They didn't have to run the races by themselves. They had coaches. They had trainers. They had people willing to help them, willing to prepare them. And so in the Christian life, we don't live by ourselves. We don't have to run the race alone. We have God. We have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. We have holy angels. We don't have to live by ourselves. God is willing to help us every step of the way. God is willing to be there for us every step of the way. If we ask for help, we're going to get help. If we ask for strength, we're going to get strength. If we ask God to help me every single day, He's going to help you every single day. 1 Peter 1, 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. He doesn't say you're kept by your own individual efforts. He doesn't say you're kept because you grit your teeth. He says we're kept by the power of God. The power of God in our hearts. The power of God in our lives. The power of God giving us strength, giving us courage, helping us to live the way we need to live. Colossians 1.11 Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. He doesn't say anything here about your own strength or your own abilities, but strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit, giving us help day by day, giving us courage day by day. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. God is there for his children. God is there to help his children. God is there to give strength and power to his children. Now some of these coaches, they were pretty tough on the runners. And some of the trainers seemed to show them no mercy. And the reason they did that was because they knew if I pushed the runner just a little bit, he's going to improve so much. So some of the coaches were pretty tough. And we as Christians... Sometimes we face trouble. Sometimes we face trial. Sometimes life gets pretty hard. It's not that God has left us. He's trying to perfect us. He knows if he allows us a little bit of trouble, we're going to do so much better. He knows we're going to pray so much harder. We're going to seek his help so much more. In 1 Peter 1, 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice... Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Through all these trials and troubles and struggles. 
that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Sometimes God allows trouble because he's trying to perfect our faith. Sometimes God allows some tough times because he's trying to push us. He knows if I just push them a little bit, they're going to grow so much. He knows that if he allows just a little bit of trouble, a little bit of struggle, we're going to grow so much. And sometimes God allows trouble. Not because he doesn't care, but because he does care. Because he's trying to make us to be the very best that we can be. Now I know we think the best we can be is when we get all this money and we get all these things that we want and all these good times. But God knows the very best we can be is great men and women who love God more than anything. And he is working to perfect us. Sometimes he has to push us. Jeremiah 12.5 If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, how canst thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusted, they wearied thee, how then wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? In other words, what he's trying to say is, if we can't be faithful now, when we got enough to eat, we got a warm bed to sleep in, and nobody's trying to hurt us, how can we ever stand during the time of trouble? If I'm compromising now, and I'm half-hearted now, how am I ever going to stand when things get really bad? Some people think, well, I'll just compromise now, but when the time comes, I'm going to be faithful. Well, don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. If we can't be faithful now, we're not going to be faithful then. Now's the time. Now's the time to perfect our faith. Now's the time to learn to be great Christians. Now's the time to seek God with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our courage. God is there for his children. God is there for his children. All right, let's wrap this up. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others... I myself should be a cast away. Paul was a human being. And he understood that there's some sins that look really good. And feel really good. And sound really good. And taste really good. And he said, I'm doing all I can to avoid these things because I'm not going to let them sidetrack me. And in our lives, the devil knows our weaknesses. And there may be some things that we have to shun because the devil's going to use it against us. He knows our weaknesses, and he's coming to sidetrack us and keep us out of heaven. But in 1 John 2.15, as we close, we are told, love not the world. That is, the sins of the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All those things that look so good, all those sins that feel so good, all those sins that excite us and thrill us, he says, they're not of the Father, they're of the world, they're of the devil. Verse 17, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All those who choose to be faithful can be faithful. All those who choose to give it their best and give it their all, they will enter into heaven. They will have eternal life. Is there anybody here today that wants to give it their best? Anybody wants to give it their all? There's a crown of righteousness waiting for those who will. Let's pray. Father, help us to give it our best and give it our all for you. In Jesus' name, amen.